Malphite. So you just got auto filled and you need something to play. If you're looking for a piss easy yet incredibly fun champion in the top lane, Malphite is one of my go-to picks. His simple kit and clear champion identity gives you a lot of mental headroom to think about other aspects of the game, such as your win conditions and how to play out certain matchups, making him both a champion that's very rewarding to pick up if you're failed or weak side, as well as someone that gives you the headspace to shot call and even set up the map if you have more experience. Here's a quick breakdown of how we'll be going over the video. I'll touch on general concepts of Malphite's purpose as a champion and what success looks like in games that you're doing well in him. We'll then discuss different components of his kit and how we can work better to optimize each one of these. This includes going over different matchups, rune optimizations, ability maxing, your build, drafting, and how to play out each phase of the game. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, would really appreciate a like on it if it helped you out. Malfoy has several strengths that make him a strong pick at top lane. He has great engage potential with his ultimate, unstoppable force, which can knock up multiple enemies and set up kills for his team. Malfoy is also very durable as a champion, thanks to his grand shield passive being so strong and scaling with armor and his ability to build tanky items. In addition, Malphite's abilities can reduce the attack speed of enemies and slow them down, making him effective at chasing down fleeing enemies and healing for his own team. Inherently, this ties well into when you want to pick him. A lot of factors revolving around Malphite's kit allow him to be constituted as an engaged champion, loving faster fights and absolutely cucking any AD champions because of his ridiculous armor scalings. As a result, he generally will suck against comps that don't allow him to flex his armor strengths, so in draft or in solo queue, I'd recommend waiting as long as possible to pick him so that you can make sure he's picked in the correct scenarios and potentially get a counter pick. Let's touch on Malphite's kit. As simple as it is, I would say, I would argue that there's decent flexibility in what to max and what to spec on Malphite depending on the matchup, and it can actually significantly change the way he plays out lanes. Each of Malphite's basic abilities provide a unique strength that can alter his playstyle pretty greatly in the early game and can be complemented by his very room setups. Let's start with his passive, Granite Shield. Malphite's passive ability provides him with a shield periodically that absorbs a percentage of his maximum health every few seconds, and his cooldown scales with this level. While the shield is active, the armor bonus from Malphite's W is tripled, by the way, but we'll get to that one later. Basically, the highest impact way to utilize this ability is to leverage it in lane to get you periodic opportunities to advance, make small trades, or simply breathe in lane a little bit easier. Granite Shield is effectively free HP, so whenever it's up, it's your chance to go up for that risky your CS or to swing at the enemy laner for a short trade. Once the shield breaks, that's essentially your signal to go back into hiding as a weak side laner you are. This shield helps Malfoy significantly when transitioning through laning phase, especially after his first base or so. Keep in mind that the cooldown of your shield resets if you take damage, so it's very important to give enough space so that you can back off, allow your shield to actually reset, and then you can come back and then try to lane again. Malphite's Q, Seismic Shard, is a targeted ability that allows him to hurl a rock at an enemy, dealing magic damage and slowing the target's movement speed. If Malphite hits a target, he gains a temporary speed boost for the same amount. This ability can be used for poking enemies in lane or chasing down fleeing targets. In matchups where you know you can play for a poke win condition, you can actually max your Q in order to put a lot of pressure on enemy laners that don't have a lot of sustain or can't really punish you. The one biggest thing that you'll notice with Malphite's Q is that it absolutely demolishes your mana pool if you aren't careful. This ability is effectively free damage in lane whenever it's up, but the game will punish you heavily if you aren't selective with it. You could circumvent this mana pool issue by itemizing things like tier to make the most of it, but as of the timing of this, this video, it's not the primary way that Malphite likes to trade. I would suggest pacing it with your rune cooldown, like Arcane Comet or Mana Float Band, just to make sure you're getting maximum value off of each Q. Malphite's W is where I'd say the fun begins. Thunderclap is probably the most overloaded ability in this kit. To start things off, this ability has a passive where Malphite straight up gets up to 30% armor for free no questions asked. And this bonus armor goes up to 90% while his passive shield is up. Keep in mind that Malphite literally gets damage off of his armor as well. So while Granite Shield is up, he not only gains bonus resistances, but he gets extra damage because the extra armor is adding points to his abilities. This includes Malphite's W itself, which is an auto attack reset that does bonus physical damage and gives him 50 bonus range for it. This ability also gives Malphite an on hit bonus for 5 seconds that also scales with AP and armor. This ability is an excellent max for Malphite and a lot of his optimal weak side matchups into ED champions, mainly because of just how much armor this ability gives. It makes it just so easy to survive later phases in lane, and once at rank 5 especially, you just access a disgusting amount of armor in the game. In AD matchups, by level 7 or 9, if you're investing a lot of points into your W, you'll be able to relatively easily stat check enemy AD laners. If you're feeling out your trades or if it's early game and you don't feel like you have enough stat potential to win all ins, you can use your W simply as an auto reset and then go for shorter trades that way. If you win longer trades, however, you can continue to take advantage of the on-hit damage of this ability to simply smack them. 
Because of this, in any AD matchup, I would highly recommend maxing W most often. Malphite's E, Ground Slam, is an area of infectability that deals magic damage to enemies around him and reduces their attack speed for a short time. The ability's damage also scales with Malphite's armor, making it an effective tool for wave clearing and trading with enemy laners. I highly recommend it you max it second, and most of the time, max Q last. It also happens to reduce enemy attack speed significantly. A basic trading combo can be walking to the enemy laner as they try to trade against you, and then using your auto W E combo to get off a lot of autos at once, while at the same time inhibiting the enemy's ability to do the same. It's very disjointing to have such a drastic reduction in attack speed, especially in the early game, because a lot of champions are reliant on auto attack resets or being able to weave in with abilities, and it really throws them off very often. It's also a great ability to pair right after your ultimate, since you can proc its AoE and apply the attack speed debuff to multiple enemies at once, so it's very powerful in that sense. Malphite's ultimate ability is a powerful engage tool that allows him to charge towards a target location, dealing magic damage to all enemies in the area, and knocking them up for a short duration. This ability is one of Malphite's signature moves and is often used to initiate team fights or catch out enemies who are out of position. It can also be technically used for peel, but I think its best strength is to start fights off since it's so simple and effective at doing so. The main caveat with this ability is that since it's so simple, many players are in fact ready for it and are playing around the normal timings for it when you might use it. Either try to find unique angles to go for it or play around with the timing of it so that the enemy might not be ready for it. There's actually one more very important thing about Malphite's ultimate that's a little bit more niche that you should probably know. Due to the way that wall targeting works in League, you can actually cut the travel speed of Malphite's ultimate significantly by aiming it over a wall. By aiming it over basically the halfway point of the wall, the game basically forces Malphite's ultimate to travel as if the total cast time of the ability was to that half wall, but except extending that distance. The end result here of what you get is actually a much faster ultimate, very noticeably so. This cuts down significantly the ability for the enemy champions to be able to potentially respond to your ultimate because that is the biggest issue with it. This isn't going to be applicable in every single scenario, but when you see or potentially can consider an engage over a wall, this is definitely something that you should keep in mind. To supplement the overall playstyle and abilities, Malfa can play around a little bit with his runes in order to accommodate his laning style. As of the time of filming, the two main trees that he'll be going for are going to be Sorcery and Resolve, as they tend to best complement his playstyle. Some players have opted for other unique takes in the Domination tree with Ultimate Hunter and Cheap Shot, or with Inspiration going Free Ass Boots and Biscuits for Secondary Trees. But these are more niche picks that I would say aren't too needed for most Malphite games. So there's two main keystones to go for here. Arcane Comet, which is the most popular one I'd say, and Grasp of the Undying, another decent option. The process for deciding which keystone to go for in your games will basically be a matter of how viable Grasp is in that lane, and then switching to Comet whenever Grasp's viability in your matchup fails to meet certain conditions. In this case, I would consider there to be two main conditions. The first is, can I easily and reasonably reach the enemy laner most of the time in lane? And if I can, is it in my best interest to do so? Is it worth it for me to walk up to them and trade with them. If you don't meet both of these conditions, then I actually recommend that you go for Arcane Comet instead. This is because if either one of these conditions isn't met, this means that it's hard for you to proc Grasp effectively or without paying too much of a cost for it. If you can't reach the enemy easily, like if they're ranged for example, then it's of course going to be impossible to proc it and you basically won't have a Keystone Rune at that point. If the enemy just has really good trades against you for the entirety of the game, like Silas for example, then it also doesn't really make sense to walk up to proc Grasp because they're going to exchange an extended trade on you and then you won't be able to play the game. In these cases, it's better to go Comment as it's non-committal and it gives Malphite more agency and harass through his Q. Now let's quickly touch on the build for each page. Starting with the comment page, with the Sorcery Tree primary, we'll take Manifold Band, Transcendence, and Scorch for good poke. Sometimes I like swapping out Scorch for Gathering Storm if you feel like Scorch might not be relevant in land. Then in the secondary Resolve Tree, you'll grab Second Wind and Unflinching, or Overgrowth instead of Unflinching if the Tenacity isn't necessary for you. Swapping this around to the Grasp Tree, you'll take Demolish, Second Wind, and Unflinching or Overgrowth again, then you'll take your favorite two runes from the Sorcery Tree. My recommendation is probably Manifold Band and Transcendence for the simplest and most consistent mid-game spike. For your stat runes, I generally like Attack Speed or CDR in the top row, and then double armor if you're facing an AD matchup, or adjusting it to one MR rune and one scaling HP rune against an AP matchup. Speaking of which, I think matchups are a pretty easy mindset to have with Malphite, because he's not really known for being a lane bully. His kit is built for loss aversion and really taking the hits like a champ, then scaling into the mid game well with minimal resources and winning through his teamfight presence. We should however still take the time to really think about the bad ones for him. If you're facing any AD 
bruise your champ in the game. Malphite literally does out that lane without a problem. Jace, Irelia, Trinimir, Yone, Fiora. Like Malphite does not give a damn about these champs and will literally just walk away from lane with time. After first base, you buy some armor and then suddenly the enemy champion literally does no damage. It's crazy. His weakness on the other hand is any champion that can circumvent this string. If they're mainly AP, if they're Olaf and can access true damage and circumvent you, or if they're a tank that can outscale you like Orin, Scion, or Shen. If you think about it and draft for a few seconds, it's usually pretty easy to know whether or not a Malphite matchup is good or bad. I also want to mention the worst matchup by far for Malphite is Silas. Silas top is not very common at all though, and it's really only tailor-made to destroy Malphite. When he lanes against you, he not only counters you, since he's AP, he will literally be a better version of you since he can take your ultimate as well. He wins extended trades against you, he has the range to force these trades against you as well, and you don't outscale. Really, there's not much you can do in this lane unless the Silas misplays, so you really have to hold out and try to play for your team in this situation and in losing matchups in general. This is the mindset with playing Malphite matchups overall though, is that you should try to avoid ones that you are losing. It sounds very obvious at first, but Malphite is a champ where if he's good in that matchup, he's going to feel really good, but if it's bad, it's feeling really, really bad. This stresses the importance of him being a counter pick champion, being able to pick him as late as possible in draft. Let's talk Malphite items. To start, it's pretty simple. 95% of the time, you're going to start Doran's shield. I've seen some Malphite start tier and spam Q in lane to get some good poke off, which can be viable, but I would say it's very niche, and I don't really recommend it. Don't even think about that Doran's ring. From here, Malphite's best mythic overall is Frostfire Gauntlet, as it just feels pretty good in his kit. It turns his W auto reset into a slow, and then gives him more CC to continue autoing the enemy with extended trades, it has armor built in, and it's a great tank item for him to start with. It's a little counterintuitive, but unless the enemy has a lot of sustain baked into their kit that you want to reduce, you want to hold off on buying Bramble Vest. It's very good on Malphite, don't get me wrong, but the main issue with this item is that it delays Malph's mythic by 800 gold when you buy it, which actually feels pretty bad considering you're a low economy weak side champion. Most of the time, it's okay to actually just tough it out and build your armor components to either Sunfire Aegis or your Mythic, and then usually you'll be able to tough out the landing phase from there. It's very important that Malphite hits two, three items here because that's when he hits his spike, and until then, he's not going to feel pretty good at all. If you're in the unfortunate situation where you manage to pick Malphite into an AP champion, itemization and landing phase is pretty tough. I would recommend picking up Spectre's Cowl early in this case to minimize the damage, in which case you can basically access triple regen when combining this with Second Wind and Doran Shield, since Spectre's Cowl also has effectively the same passive. Then you can transition into Crossfire as the teamfight stage commences in the mid game. For boot options at this point, as gold efficient as Tabby's are on this champion, they're honestly not that necessary a lot of the time. My favorite picks here are actually Lucidity Roots, which give Malphite well needed CDR on his kit and especially on his teleport. Malphite's an excellent user of the Summoner spell in order to fight sweet angles for teamfights, so the Lucids end up helping a ton. If resistance boosts end up having insane value, however, feel free to use your judgment to make the best decision based on the game. After your core items of Frostfire, Sunfire, and Boots, Malphite pretty much continues to buy more value items depending on on the enemy damage composition. If you had to start Spectre's Cowl earlier in the game because of an AP matchup, then you can delay Sunfire to your third item and then pick up Abyssal Mask early on. Your main other MR option that isn't Abyssal Mask is going to be Force of Nature. Fawn's a better overall stat check option for just great levels of MR, but Abyssal Mask strikes a satisfying balance between sustain, magic resist, and also reducing the enemy's team MR. If you need even more armor, then Frozen Heart makes for an excellent fourth item as well as Thorn Mail. Randoms is also good, but the insane value of the other two items I recommended is probably just going to exceed it. This item section also assumes that you're going to tank Malphite and not the Demon Forbidden AP Malphite build, keep in mind. On team fighting, Malphite excels at engaging in team fights and disrupting the enemy team. To maximize his impact on team fights, Malphite players need to understand their role and execute their abilities effectively. As Malphite, your primary goal in team fights is to engage onto the enemy backline and disrupt their carries. Use your ultimate ability, Unstoppable Force, to knock up multiple enemy team targets and peel for your own carries if necessary. Coordinate with your team and communicate your intentions to execute effective engagements and follow-ups. It's a pretty simple job most of the time, but this just means that you can reorient your focus on the execution of these fights. What's my angle of approach? What are the other champions on my team looking for in terms of win conditions and fights? How can I change my playstyle to better play into this? I would say that these are all pretty good questions to ask yourself continuously in order to potentially change up how you play out your team fights while you just randomly press E and R on, your, on the enemy. I would say that these are all pretty good questions to ask yourself continuously in order to potentially change up how you play your team fights. You're going to have this mental leverage available because you're literally just going to press R and that's your team fight contribution. Overall, Malphite is a simple and surprisingly satisfying champion to pick up if you're looking for a frontline champ to add to your pool. He's very loud and proud in his playstyle and unapologetically punishes any champion that wishes to challenge him against his armor strength. As always, hope this video was insightful to you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay fresh.